welcome back to my channel. This is your girl Sean. I'm back for another video. In this video today, I'm going to be doing a review for Insecure Season 4, Episode 3. And there was so much that went on in this episode. It's my favorite episode of the season by far. The storylines really moved along. And, you know, some people were saying that the first episode was slow. This one definitely picked up the pace. We got a lot of ground to cover. So we're about to get into it in just a minute. But if you like commentary like this, uh, be sure to check out my previous video. I'll link it on the screen. But if you also like fashion and dating advice, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And if you're already a subscriber, hit that little bell. That way you'll be notified every single time I upload a video. So this video is podcast style. So I hope that you enjoy it. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the show actually opens with Lawrence. He's in the mirror and he is rehearsing his speech or proposal that he's going to be giving at work. It definitely looks like it's important, but he's interrupted by the sound of an alarm. And we look over and it is none other than our girl Condola looking happy as a pig and slop in this man's bed. <laughs> so they're definitely getting very familiar, very cozy with each other. I know they haven't been dating very long, but it's definitely progressing, at least for Lawrence, because, you know, Lawrence is asking her about her Thanksgiving plans, and she's telling him that, you know, she has plans at work, but then she also mentions that she's got this Friendsgiving that she's going to be hosting, and he, this brother goes ahead and invites himself. And so she's like, I didn't know you wanted to come, but okay, that's fine. That's fine is not the same as inviting somebody. But Lawrence is so like into her that he doesn't really see that. Because I mean, if she wanted him to come, she would have invited him. But you know, he didn't, he ignored the red flags. We're going to talk about that a little bit later as the show progresses. But then we see Lawrence, he's off to work and he goes to talk to the receptionist because he has a meeting with, I guess, his bosses. And she tells them that, you know, something came up and the meeting has been canceled. And Lawrence kind of says, you know, is everything okay? And she gives him like a not really, not really affirmative or not very assuring uh, sign that, yeah, 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 everything's okay. It's not very believable. So he already kind of knows that something is up. So then there's a scene with Lawrence and Chad and their in the car and Chad has a brand new Range Rover even though he hasn't sold a house in months and you know Lawrence is like you know telling him that you know his job is actually going to be cutting back on the staff and he's disappointed by that because he had hoped to get promoted he says that he's tired of being where he is and then Chad is telling him basically be happy where you are you're a lot better than you were last year last year you were a bum that's Chad's words and it's true. I think the biggest problem that so many of us have with Lawrence is that Lawrence was expecting Issa to take care of him for years, showing no ambition, no drive. Lawrence didn't start getting his life together until he had no choice but to get his life together. And that's what happens sometimes when you do too much for a man. They get comfortable. Before the Lawrence Hyde tries to come for my neck, I'm just saying, as I'm not excusing what Issa did. Issa should have communicated all of this to Lawrence before she stepped out of the relationship. But my problem is Lawrence is not blameless because Lawrence did not realize the strain that he was putting on Issa. And I feel like, you know, he's just like, well, you cheated, so that's wrong. He also never acknowledges where he messed up in that relationship. And that's why he gets on my nerves sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, this is where it starts to get juicy, girl. So anyway, Issa is minding her own business, looking amazing. Every time Lawrence runs across Issa, she's always looking good. She don't have no headscarf on, no bonnet. She always looks cute. So she actually is looking well put together. She stepped up her game. So we already know from episode one that Issa wears her cute clothes and returns them back to the store, but it doesn't matter. She was looking cute and Lawrence was taken aback. He was looking at her for a while before he finally, you know, spoke to her. So he comes over to her and he, you know, starts asking her, are you watching this show? And she's like, yeah. And then they start having this witty banter. You could, all of the familiarity, like they have so many inside jokes and it's just, you could see the rapport. At the end of the day, Lawrence and Issa were friends. Friends. That's why it doesn't matter if they're in a romantic relationship or not. They still had that chemistry because there was a friendship there. And then Condola comes around looking just lost. And she's like, you know, hey, everybody. She's not in on the jokes. She's an outsider, a third wheel. And it, it's awkward. So Issa, in an attempt to make it less awkward, she actually is like, oh, yeah, I'm getting my food to go. And so as soon as she says that, like, the cashier guy is like, dine in order for Issa, <laughs> which makes it even more awkward. So she just grabs her food, the little drink, and she tries to leave. And then this is when I knew. At first, I really, I didn't think Issa was over Lawrence, but I thought she was getting over Lawrence, not completely, but TSA Bay and the, the whole phase and all that stuff that she went through, I thought she was getting over Lawrence. But when she looked back and the way she looked at him when he was holding a uh, condola, 
I knew it right then and there. I was like, nah, she's nowhere near over this man. Nowhere near it. So then there comes the moment that not necessarily we've all been waiting for. I'm actually pretty pleasantly surprised if they didn't drag this all the way out to like the season finale. We're getting right down and dirty with it. Issa and Molly are going to the grocery store and they're just like picking up things for Thanksgiving dinner. And everything is fine from the beginning. But then Molly asks Issa, do you think that I should invite Andrew over to my parents' house for Thanksgiving? And Issa's like, what? Girl, you gonna mess around and pull an old Molly and scare him away. And girl that cut me like ouch like even i clutch my pearls that is just they have been so blunt with each other that whole hold each other accountable thing i knew it was gonna backfire so then it's molly's turn to be shady and she says to isa i wonder when you're gonna stop acting like you're okay with lawrence and condola and he says, like, I am okay with it. As a matter of fact, I just saw them yesterday and I was fine with it. It was all positive vibes and it was all love. And Molly's like under her breath, like, I hope you're enjoying this thruple. And then Issa was like, I know you're not talking about a thruple when you were in a relationship with a whole married man. Sometimes I think that Molly, like, forgets her own doggone resume. Like, before you drag Issa for not having her life together, girl, you've been a mess, okay? <laughs> it's a knockdown, drag out fight. And they both say, you know what? You know, we need to talk about this. And they do what they've been doing since the very beginning, and that is putting it off. Oh, let's talk tomorrow. Oh, let's talk at Self Care Sunday. Oh, let's talk next week. They keep scheduling these things that need to be addressed right now now and it's only going to get worse every time they get together it is more and more animosity they keep putting each other off and not prioritizing their friendship like they used to lawrence goes over to condola and you know what i noticed condola wears a lot of black and white and in this episode or in this particular scene lawrence had on black and white and it was almost like they were in sync until the end but we'll get there so anyway lawrence is in there he brought a bottle of wine he's excited about meeting her friends she has a leaky pipe he's like you know, volunteering to be Mr. Fix-It. That's when the dude starts volunteering to do little household chores for you. That's how you know he's trying to impress you. Whether he's taking out the trash, whether he's wanting to take your car to get the oil change, whether he's cutting your grass. Like, girl, I love a man who is handy, okay? <laughs> so when Lawrence volunteered to do that, I'm like, look at him. He's really trying to impress her. The thing about it is with Lawrence that I'm noticing, at least in this episode, is Lawrence is just ready. I feel like he wants to pick up where he left off with Issa with condola instead of just letting it build slowly i feel like they've been moving too fast but it's at his pace going away for the weekend with each other and you know wanting to meet her friends volunteering to meet her friends and like i just feel like he's just trying to like fill a void that maybe Issa left. So a pleasant surprise. We actually get to see Molly's family again, which is really good to see. I like to see Molly interact. A lot of people have been asking for Molly's backstory. So we did get a glimpse of that. So Molly's still mad at her dad for stepping out on her mom years and years and years ago, like 20 years ago. The mom got over it. The brothers got over it. Molly is the only one who's still mad. What I realize about Molly is if uh, the relationship that she has with someone, if it's not absolutely perfect, she'll let it go. Even if that's her dad, even if that's her friend, even if that's with a guy that she really likes, Molly is looking for perfection, but she's not perfect. That's the problem. So Molly's still giving her dad the cold shoulder. And then her mom actually asked Molly about, you know, if she's seeing anyone. And Molly's like, yes, I actually am seeing someone. And the mom wants to see. And she shows uh, her mom a picture of Andrew, who looks nice in the little picture. And then the brother comes in. And they're like, you know, oh, is he crazy and rich? Because, you know, crazy rich Asian. I, I got that joke. But anyway, so, yeah, you know, the, the mom was like, you should have brought him over. And, and Molly says, you know, what Issa said, I shouldn't. Molly absolutely hates Issa's life decisions, but it's all always asking her for advice. It's like, well, girl, if you don't like how her life is turning out, why are you asking her? But anyway, so then it goes on to Issa and her brother Amal. They're actually headed to their mom's house. So they have a stepdad and they also have uh, stepsisters. I think they're a set of twins. And they, they clearly don't want to go. They don't like the whole blended family thing. They get there and the, the mom said that he slipped on some gravy. So the paramedics is there and they're taking him off. And the mom is like, you know, just go ahead in the house and, you know, have fun with your stepsisters. And Issa and Amal look at each other and are like, absolutely not. And they leave. So Issa and Amal head to a Mexican 
Mexican restaurant for Thanksgiving dinner, but it's an hour wait. So she texts Molly and tells her she's going to be a little bit late, but to save her some pie. So then Lawrence is trying to make a good impression on Condola's friends. So he's meeting the different couples. They seem a bit stiff, but then so does Condola. I hate, I do like Condola, but they're, they're not going to give you the, the laughter. It's just a different vibe than what like Kelly and Derek and Tiffany and Chad and all of them have together because they've known each other for so long. And this is very new and Lawrence is clearly an outsider. Anyway, they're talking as a group and, you know, Condola says that she's not interested in marriage like at all. And that's a huge shock to Lawrence. But Lawrence would know that if he wasn't trying to rush this relationship into stages that it's not ready for. But not only that, so, you know, while they're having this little dinner, you know, one of the friends is clearly drunk. So Lawrence excuses himself to go, you know, replenish everybody's wine glasses and everything. And this girl goes with him and she's letting him know, Lawrence, we really are happy that you're with Condola. You know, after her husband left her, we just needed her to have some fun and to really get out there and put herself out there again. And this has really been good for her and all that. But they're really sort of minimizing the relationship or minimizing where Lawrence thought the relationship was. Lawrence thought that they were building on to something and making something a bit more serious. And then he finds out from her friend, oh, this is just a fling. So Issa and Amal are at the Mexican restaurant. They're actually having a really great time as a mariachi band that comes over and is like singing and playing music at the table and they're just having a really good time even though they did talk a little bit about their parents giving you a little bit of insight into Issa's story you know that she was saying that her parents had a, a dysfunctional relationship and sometimes that happens like when Issa came from a dysfunctional relationship sometimes it's really hard for you to be the one to have a healthy one it's not impossible though so you just have to work a little harder sometimes uh, to make sure that you don't repeat the same patterns that you saw growing up and that you're your own person and just because your parents made certain mistakes doesn't mean that you're destined to make those same mistakes we also talked a little bit about Amal and how, you know, he was saying that, you know, the mom made this prayer and basically uh, tried to shame him because he did have a relationship with him. I think he brought his boyfriend to this Thanksgiving dinner and the mom said this prayer and all of that and it made him feel uncomfortable, even though one of his aunts showed up with somebody's husband. And they're just kind of talking about, they're kind of bonding over the dysfunction and bonding over the trauma. So Issa actually opens up to Amal and she lets him know that she did feel some kind of way when she saw Issa and Condola the other day and you know she was basically like I don't even have a right to feel like that and Amal was like you have a right to feel however you want to feel and I'm like you know what these brothers Molly's brother and Issa's brother be giving some good advice that's true people always trying to tell you how you should feel that's your feelings feel your feelings okay so Issa and Amal actually had a really good Thanksgiving together as brother and sister. They were able to laugh and bond and all of that over some good Mexican food. They were actually putting some of that on their Instagram story, which is important for later. I really do love that they've given Amal a lot more to do this season and really sort of showed you a little bit more of the relationship that he has with Issa. So we're back with Molly and her family and Molly is still acting funny with her father. They're about to play this game and everybody's excited about it and as soon as they want to pay Molly on her dad's team uh, she tries to volunteer to be the scorekeeper and that's just again very obvious that she doesn't want to she doesn't want to allow her dad the chance to um, get close to her again she really feels betrayed by what he did to her mom and so the brother pulls her to the side and he talks to her about it and he lets her know that happened a long time ago and the man has worked very hard to make amends and that Molly should forgive him so we're back with Lawrence and Condola and you know Condola's letting Lawrence know that the friends really liked him and he was like I'm really glad your friends are cool and all of that and you know he's like well thanks for inviting me and she laughs and she was like basically I didn't invite you you invited yourself which he did and he kind of like laughs because again he thought the relationship was a lot further along than she did and then he's like well I didn't know about you not wanting to get married she's like yeah well I've already been married I it took me a long time to get over the divorce and all that and I'm not trying to do that again and he's like well okay so so then Lauren says, I'm just going to go ahead and ask you, are you still trying to get over your ex? She doesn't answer him. She she hits him with the Jedi mind trick, tries to deflect. And she was like, what? What? How did this conversation turn about my ex? Like, what does that have to do with anything? Then she turns her back and says, you know, 
if anybody should be worrying about anybody's ex, it should be me. And Lawrence is like, what? And she was like, yes, I mean, y'all have the same friends. Y'all have inside jokes. And he's like, yeah, but but that's over. Like, I ended it. I walked away. I'm the one who broke up with her. And she was like, well, what if she didn't cheat? And he was like, well, so what if she didn't cheat? Like, what are you trying to say? Then what if she didn't cheat? Would you still be with her? He didn't answer her. And, you know, when he first came in, he was wearing black and white. She was wearing black and white. I felt like they were both in sync. But at this particular scene, they literally couldn't be any further apart. This is the screenshot of what it actually looks like, both physically and literally. They couldn't be further apart at that moment. And, you know, that's what happens. Like he's, he's, he was rushing into the relationship and he, he thought he had found his replacement for Issa, in my opinion. And he was trying to pick up where they left off. And she wasn't Issa. So because everything took so long at the Mexican restaurant, it was a wait, of course, on Thanksgiving, it's going to be a wait to eat. It was really late by the time she and Amal were done. And so plus, you know, the whole situation with Molly and Issa was awkward. So when she tried to drop off Amal, you know, she told him that, she, you know, she told him that she hated him, but I know that meant that she loved him, gave him a hug. And she texts Molly back and she was like, you know, can we talk about this another time? And Molly was like, okay, girl. This is what they kept on doing. This is why nothing ever gets resolved. They have never addressed the elephant in the room. And every time they do get together, it's animosity. They don't agree with the other person's decisions, life decisions, but they keep trying to give each other advice. Molly is like, how are you going to talk to me about what I'm doing? And you were sleeping with TSA Bay. And, you know, he's got two kids and one on the way. You know, last week she started zoning Issa out when she was telling her about that. And Issa's like, how are you worried about me, Lawrence, and Condola when you were with a whole married man? They don't respect each other's opinion anymore. And they used to. And so now they don't feel comfortable talking to each other about, you know, their relationships like they used to. Because they're like, well, I don't need relationship advice from you. Your life is a mess. They used to run everything by each other. Like when Issa found out about Condola and Lawrence and Molly was like, why didn't you call me? Molly, they're used to giving each other the play by play and they haven't been doing that. Like last week's episode where they were having you know, the Halloween thing and Kelly was like, I already heard this story. And Issa's like, what? I haven't heard the story. They, they're not running every little detail by each other anymore. And that's fine. That's what happens when you grow up. Your girlfriend don't need to know everything about your relationship. All she need to know is we good, babe. We good over here. Like... That's a part of being mature. Like, we're not teenagers anymore. You're not 16. They're not, they're not 16. They're not 18 years old where you got to, your girlfriend is right next to you while you're getting ready to send a text. Girl, aren't y'all grown? Aren't y'all grown? So the last scene of the episode is Lawrence and Lawrence is on his phone. He's on Instagram and y'all know how everybody posts every little detail on, on Thanksgiving. So he's on Insta story and he's seeing what, you know, Derek and Tiffany are doing. He's smiling. He's seeing Kelly and he's seeing, you know, all his friends. He's seeing Molly and all of that. And then he sees Issa and Issa is having fun with them all. And then he puts a crying face emoji, like laughing, crying face emoji. And then he tries to... The three dots means he was trying to start up a conversation. And I'm like, you know what? I don't, I'm conflicted about whether or not I want them. Matter of fact, no, I don't think I want them back together. And mainly because I don't think that Lawrence will ever get over the fact that Issa cheated and he'll always have that to throw in her face. I wish she didn't cheat because if she didn't, they could have found their way back together. But men have a harder time dealing with that than women. Y'all know how many celebrities you know who took back a cheating man. But on the flip side, how many men that you know, celebrities or, or otherwise, who have taken back a cheating woman? Men don't do that. When Issa was talking to Amal and she was telling him that, you know, Lawrence, she never got this Lawrence and she's so right I was literally clapping my husband was looking at me and I was like this is the truth Issa never got this Lawrence this driven Lawrence this focused Lawrence this Lawrence trying to get a promotion all that brother was doing was playing video games on her couch eating up her food living rent fee free for years being oblivious to how his woman felt for years Condola got this focused polished man with his own apartment trying to do better like he's all about upward mobility. And she was like, basically she felt cheated. How many of us feel like that? Been in a relationship, build a man up. And then as soon as he get on, he want to find somebody else. And you're just like, but that's not fair. I did all the heavy lifting. I did all the work. How dare somebody come in <laughs> after the house has been built and just put her bags down. 
That's pretty much it for this week's episode of Insecure. I absolutely loved it. By far my favorite episode of the season. But I want to ask that question to you guys. Like, do you think that a man can take a cheating woman back? Or why don't men take cheating women back the way women take cheating men back? What is it about men that they can't seem to forgive? but they want to be forgiven when it's them. Also, do you think that Issa and Molly's friendship can be repaired? Can it be restored? And do you feel like your friend should get the play-by-play in your relationship? Do you think that's a part of maturity? I'd love to get a conversation started, so go ahead and let me know in the comment section. Also, do you think that Lawrence was moving too fast with Condola? Because I feel like it. I'm not sure exactly the timeline for it, but I think it might have only been a couple of months, two or three months. And going away on trips and wanting to meet her friends, like it was just moving really fast. And I'm like, what's the rush? (laughs) Like, he's like somebody who wanted to get married and all he was looking for was a bride. Like he had the ring picked out, he had the venue picked out, he had the suit picked out. He's like, all I need is a bride. Like I just feel like he was moving that fast where it's like, does it matter who it is? Okay. Anyway, so I would like to hear your thoughts and opinions below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It helps my channel so much. Be sure to subscribe so you can get my video next week and all my other content. I love you guys. I'll see you all in the next one. Until next time, later divas and dudes. Deuces, honey. (laughs) 